As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be. Oh man, it's eight o'clock. And so that'll make it a. I don't need the spotlight. I shine just fine. Hi, I'm Karma, and yes, I am a bitch. Brav Bros. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brav Bros, your favorite podcast from the bros for everybody. For whoever wants to listen, I am your co-host, Steel Russell, joined as always by the one and only Shooter Magooter. What's up, dude? Very official. We uh, got to switch gears back into Bravo. Yeah, we're back to Bravo, back to our bread and butter, if you will. Although, I will say there was an unexpected amount of violence in this Jersey episode, so maybe we can carry some House of the Dragon over to this. Yeah, it's similar. And for those of you that aren't aware, we are covering House of the Dragon, so if you are watching that show and like to listen to us recap it, we've gotten some great responses. People have said they've gone as far to say that we are better than the official House of the Dragon podcasts. There's a couple out there. They like us better. I'm not saying that they're right, but they probably are. How could you be official and have multiple things? I don't know. I didn't get that either, but somebody said, I listened to two official House of the Dragon podcasts. I think the one is actually HBO. It's I think the one that they promote at the end of the Maybe the other yeah. one, they only do House of the Dragon. They don't do anything else. Okay. So it's like a, an official House of the... I don't know. Unofficially official. Can we just dub it as an official podcast? Yes. All right, then we're official. We're official AF. So you heard it here, folks. But Hard launch. Hard launch. And just a quick reminder, let's get all of the details out of the way now so then we can get to the jersey of it all because this was a pretty solid episode, an entertaining episode. I got a lot. Of it all? I I did that on purpose. (laughs) Every time I say it now, like I, I feel it coming out of my mouth. What? I don't like that. <laughs> I didn't like that one at I'm all. I can say that ever again. <laughs> as long as I do. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to the business of the business. Up first, don't forget, we are launching or have launched our Brav Bros members program. We are at 250, so we are starting our exclusive episodes. You heard it here first. We're going to be going back into the rom-com vault and picking out, I think we're starting with like three Rom Conahay movies, so some Matthew Uh, McConaughey. Conahay. Yeah, baby. We're going to start out with that. We are also going to do Hitman. This week, which is on Netflix right now, we're going to release that to the masses to give you a preview of what to expect when you listen to our exclusive episode. So we're giving you a little taste of it. But we are also doing our second official monthly Zoom the week after 4th of July. So we're getting ready for that. If you missed the first one, want to join the second one, make sure you mark your calendars. We'll release the actual day this week at some point so you know what to expect. But for everyone that joined last time, they had a blast. They had a really good time doing it. So don't miss out on the fun. Join the Brav Bros members. Link is in the bio or at the bottom of this episode. Click it. $5 for the month, $50 for the year. Your choice, up to you. But join the craze that's sweeping the nation. The other order of business heads. Oh, uh, that's it. Because I already did House of the Dragon. We already talked about that. Yeah. Orders of business out of the way. Orders of business have been ordered and received. So... Let's talk about some Jersey. I posted my reaction to the fisticuffs that were thrown on this episode of Jersey. Fisticuffs. Fisticuffs. Ooh, well done, there we sir. Go. Well done. I'm glad you're firing on cylinders today. I need you. I need you. And you're picking I me need, up. I need you. This is what bros do for each other. They pick each other up. And I appreciate you because I'm a CP boy. But CP. I'm excited to talk about this episode. And I threw up a reaction video intentionally. Because I posted on Instagram and TikTok because I knew that would go fine. And I waited until the following day to post it on Twitter because I knew that would be a shit show. And I intentionally wanted to stir the pot a little bit and stir the pot I did. And the comments were just exactly what I figured they would be. The fact that nobody can look at a situation objectively with this show baffles me. The fact that people think they need to explain to us why this is different, why Jen Aiden was correct is so funny, and they talk to us like we're idiots. One person in the comments went and responded to anybody that was on Team Daniel. I think there's seven or eight of these posts. Yeah. She screenshotted the Webster's Dictionary definition oh, of dude, assault and battery. If I have to see that again, and the funny thing is, it wasn't just in our comments, because obviously, with all the engagement that was going on, anytime that we opened Twitter, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven posts in a row, and it's all Jen versus Danielle. Yeah. And there were other people also replying to those with the screen, the same screenshot. So this person that was in our DM or in our DMs, in our comments, was probably either screenshotting someone else's or whatever. There's no way that everybody did this. 
if I have to see one more Webster's Dictionary definition of assault versus battery, I'm going to lose my mind. It drove me crazy. And it's like, do you think that this is an aha moment where we're like, oh, now that I see it this way. So right. Oh, my God. I'm going to break this down now before we get into it. Do I understand if somebody gets in somebody's face that you may get shoved? Absolutely. Would I have reacted that way? Probably. Probably. If someone's like right here in my face, but... Kind of ruining my plan for later in the episode. All right. I'm sorry. I was going to say, wouldn't it? you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not I saying... Gaslight you like anymore. That was the other part where people's like, oh, you wouldn't do that? Like, you're such a hypocrite, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no. Look, I understand. Not saying I don't get why she was shoved. There's two parts to this. If that happens and you shove, you need to be ready for a retaliation. If I put hands on someone, I'm expecting to get hit back. Correct. So for everyone out there that's like, oh, Danielle's such a monster. Like that reaction was not warranted. It's like, no, once you touch somebody, it's game on. I don't give a shit. I'm going to punch you in the face. That's what she did. She hits you with a cup. And the other idiots out there that are like, what if it was glass? Is the same thing as saying, what if it was a knife? What if it was a rock? It was not a glass. It was a plastic uh. cup. It is what it is. You pushed. You got hit. That's what happens in a fight. Anybody that's trying to look at this like so far on Jen Aiden's team and so far up her ass is dumb. It's just a dumb way to look at it. There's two sides to this. You could argue that she was justified in pushing her because Danielle was in her face. That I would listen to. When you go further and say, what if this happened? That's a complete hypothetical, ridiculous scenario that did not happen, did not occur. I don't need to hear it. Yeah, and the people online, mostly, I feel like they pick and choose which physical altercation on Bravo they want to actually go after. I would love to see these people being consistent and commenting the same thing. Maybe a little screenshot of assault on other altercations that we've seen across all of the housewives. Yeah, it's been a little while since we've seen a good drink been a while. toss. <laughs> it's been a while. The, I think the last drink toss that we saw was probably Potomac. Um, I think we Did saw we see one, one in more, Miami. We saw one more recently. I mean, we saw one on uh, VPR. James. Yeah, that one doesn't count. I'm talking about housewives. But still, we see drink tosses all the time. That's one of the staples of housewife shows. So what Steele's doing here is just simply saying... You get in someone's face, you have to expect that this is going to happen. He's not even saying that Danielle was right to do so. He's just saying, you fuck around, you find out. That's it. That's it. There's no opinion there. No. There's no, I'm going to take this team or that (laughs) team there. But because you say that, it's going to look like you're picking Danielle's side. He's not doing that at all. It's just really funny. And the people that comment on these jersey, any clip that has anything to do with jersey is so funny. We could probably tweet out right now and just say, Teresa Judice. And that's watch, it. That's the tweet. Watch the and chaos. just watch people freak out. Do of it. course, you're gonna tweet do Teresa Judice. No, no, seriously, do it right now. I'm not gonna do it right now. Oh. We're not doing that to Twitter. I just look. It's just baffling to me. It's simply baffling. And the people like, and I look. The majority of you out there, those listening to us every week, talk about it. We know you're not on Twitter causing all this shit. I know it's a small group of people that watch this show. That fandom ruins this show. There's countless content creators out there that we know that are very good at their jobs that don't cover Jersey anymore because of the fans. Did you know that um, somebody who was routinely in our comments forever about all of our takes and going after us for different things has one of our videos pinned to their profile saying, these are good bros. It's so funny to me, though, because... If you say one thing that aligns with it and it gets enough traction, people will say, oh, you guys are my best friends. I love your podcast. It's so nice. You nuts. say something that goes against it, you're going to be in our replies the entire time. So it's These just so idiots. fucking funny, dude. They, and it goes farther than that. I was looking at the comments coming in and I didn't respond to any of them. You'd be very proud of me. But as I'm seeing them roll in, one person's like, these guys have been a mouthpiece for Marge all season. I was like, you fuckers don't even listen. You don't even listen to us. I'm Fuck so yeah. sick of this fandom. I'm so tired of it. And not that you're getting to me. You're not winning. It's just the idiocy. The complete, oh, utter God. idiocy astounds me when I read this shit. I'm like, God damn it. Fucking go outside. Like, put your fucking profile picture not of a Bravo Leb. Have the balls, if you're going to talk shit, to put your face on it. Like, it's such, it's so insane. Our faces aren't on our profile picture. But our, it doesn't matter. Right you now, go to our profile, you see us right there. Don't don't you provoke me right now. I'm provoked already. just a large mouthpiece. It's just, uh, seriously, I'm the biggest man. March fan here. I mean, it's just, it's laughable. If you can't look at this scenario objectively and understand why Jen pushed her, okay, fine. She's in her face. Why she got hit. Okay, fine. 
both make sense to me. It was an yeah. it was a physical altercation. And shit happens. Fuck around, find out. You know what the funniest part is too. Jen didn't really seem phased by it, and I'll give her a little bit of props here. She didn't seem phased by it, but yes, it was the reaction that she wanted. She was trying. So, of course, she's like, okay, yeah, I got what I wanted. I'm not going to be upset about this. But how many times have we seen something like this where push comes to shove, literally, or it comes to the point where physical altercations come into play for housewives, and the person who gets a drink poured on them flips out. They start crying. They start playing the victim. She didn't even do that. And Danielle's on the way home with her husband. She had the balls to leave right afterwards. So nobody was actually affected. Obviously, there's more to come out. And Danielle posted something on her Instagram, which I didn't really, it didn't really make any sense to me. She's talking about how people were lying on her for the whole year. And now you're going to find out. It's like, well, we didn't really know any, but whatever. It looks like this is just the tip of the iceberg. And someone pointed out that apparently this happens again towards the end of the season. So nothing ever gets resolved. And now everybody's calling for people to get kicked off the show. How no. about instead of looking at people getting kicked off the show, there's no reunion. There's no hint at what's going to happen next season. People are already talking about recasting. There might not be anybody on this show next year. No. And so you can't call for Jen or Danielle to get kicked off the show when you don't even know if there's going to be a show next year. Valid point. The other part of it is Danielle got suspended for this. Jen Aiden did not, which I think is fucking ridiculous. Either you got to cut them both or you keep them both around because yeah. Jen did initiate the physicality. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, I don't really give a shit. That's what happened. She touched first. That is, don't send me the goddamn definition of assault and battery again. You pushed her first. Think yes, she's in your face. All of our comments are just going to be that screenshot if now. It's our, if it's the people that love us and think it's funny, that's funny. But if it's the idiots out there that are like, do you know what it means? It's like, shut up. Just shut up and turn your Twitter off. Anyway, I wanted to get that out so we could recap this without me. There that was sitting on me. Sitting, sitting on you? It was, I'm just, I'm having a tough day with words. It was weighing on me, sir. There we go. And I got it out of the way. So now we can recap Jersey. But yeah, God damn it. God damn it. Shooter. God damn it. I almost said your, your legal name. <laughs> That's how frazzled this got me. <laughs> got but let's dive right in. We start out with Jen, Teresa, and Dolo. And we find out that Teresa is throwing a party. And then we get a quick cut to Melissa, and this is setting it all up because we're going to have a, an extended juxtapose scene. They go back and forth for a while. I did my best to keep track, so we're going to kind of- There's a couple of those that I- Yeah. The funny thing is between this scene and there's one later where there's three different parties going on, mm -hmm. where everybody's talking about the same thing, but we're just jumping around. I thought of you, and I felt bad. That's, thank you. You and your notes. I've gotten better at it because yeah. now I will put parentheses around when the other group is inserting okay. into it. So I've gotten better at following, but I appreciate you thinking about me. But uh, we jump over to Melissa at Envy, and she's got a new storefront. Things are going well. They're trying to put on a fashion show to, I don't know if it's, I got confused by the fashion show. Is it local? Do they just want to like show? I think the it's new, a local show, yeah. Like show people what they got. Okay, and you know, it's not exactly Fashion Week. <laughs> no, it's yeah, it's not Bougie Kids Fashion Week. But I do like her relationship with Danielle. I like that she invited her there. I like that Danielle is not coming into it because this would have been a big red flag for me if Danielle had came into that room and acted like she was the shit now because she had Fashion Week mm. instead of being like, oh, I'm just excited to see how you do things. And like, you have, wow, you have 10 models. I had like five and I was freaking out. So like, I like that she's still humble about it. I think there's a lot of other housewives out here that people will be, oh, she loves Danielle. But I think there's a lot of housewives that would have had their shot at like Fashion Week and then they would have been. You should do this. You got to do that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, sure. So I appreciated the way that she came in. PSA to everybody out there, nips are in. So nips are back. It's a nip bro summer this summer. Yep. Uh, catch us down Wildwood. We're going to cut out the nips of our t-shirts. Um, we're just following the well, fashion trends. Just do what we always do and just drop a bunch of buttons. Yeah, just button keep down. Those buttons keep yeah, going. Drop those buttons yeah. down as the night goes on. All the dudes out there, if you're wearing a button down in the summer, as the night gets more fun, you drop a button. Correct. That's the rules. Them's the rules. Them's the rules. We don't make them. We just follow them. But anyway... We jump back to Jen, Teresa, and Dolo, and Shooter's favorite event is occurring. They are having a nice little sound bath, trying to get Zen. I think that, I think you're Dolores. Yeah. Because she's like, I, I was finally, <laughs> I, thank, I was so thankful that somebody finally just said it. Yeah. <laughs> this does nothing for me. I don't get it. It's really, it was, it was a funny scene to me only because I like the editing of this one where they're showing what they're actually like trying to heal from. Yeah. This is what's bothering you. This is what's bothering you. That part I enjoyed, but Dolores brings up the fact that her and Paul are opening the business. Again, electric. Electric. What? Electricians? Electricians. 
Okay. She kind of described it a little bit better last week, I feel like, when she was talking to her mom and her daughter. Kind it of. It seems like they're just contractors, but they're not doing any of the work. They just own it, and they're the face of it, and there's going to be people underneath of them that they have go do the work. How do we do something like that? It'd be pretty sick. That seems pretty awesome. The bros electric. Uh, electric bros. Electric bros. Uh, that could be our EDM band name. Okay, yeah, we'll go with that. Well, one. Let's start with yeah, that. I we'll, didn't like where I was going with it, so you no, go. yeah, we'll go yeah, with electric yeah. bro EDM. Uh, yeah, you idiot. But <laughs> the divorce thing comes back. Obviously, it always is going to. She, I don't. I think that the way that Dolores functions is she's going to make up her mind on her own time. Yeah, and this to me, when she's like, he is, he can't do more than he's doing right now. Is not her trying to give him an out. I think it's more just like, I'm done talking about this with you guys. We're, we're figuring it out. We're going into business together. It's some form of a commitment. I'm okay with that for now, but I'm done with you guys. That's the vibe I got. But the housewarming recap comes up. We talk about the bottle, and Melissa points out you know, the spectacle of it all. Find out it was Louie. Because he just, it would be a nice gesture. This would be a great gesture. We're going to send the bottle, send a little letter. It's, it's a great gesture. It's not. You're you're trying to manipulate. You're trying to force something here. You know what you're doing. Both of you do. Everyone on this show does. So just remove the bottle from the equation. Well, don't you, do things like that. But it was a spectacle on both ends. Agreed. Why do they not realize this? I don't know. Why does nobody ever talk about that? That's a great point. There's a spectacle on one side for sure. Teresa sending a bottle is insane. In the first place, you're not even talking to each other. This isn't a nice gesture because we've done this a million times at this point and stop nothing doing ever this. comes of it. Let's just stop. Let's stop acting we like stop we're going to do this. It. Just because Louis here, like, yeah, he's a good scapegoat because we can always see him doing that. But it was a spectacle on Joe's end, too, because he lit the fucking card on fire and he starts talking about family and all this in the big Dom Toretto speech. So, family. yeah, it's a spectacle on both ends. It's a zero-sum game. Nobody's going to look at this and be like, oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because you did the same thing on your end. So, no, it's stupid. Let's stop. Stop it. But uh, back to Danielle and Melissa, and they bring up Jen Aiden. And to me, looking at this whole thing, when you break down what Jen is trying to be upset about, Jen's just looking for a reason to try to hate Danielle. I don't really understand why until later when Jen points out, she's like, I don't understand why Teresa's trying to bring her into this group. I'm like, oh, you're threatened by Danielle. Yes, she is. That's where this is coming from. Because Danielle, for all intents and purposes, has a nice marriage. She's doing well with her business. Meanwhile, Bill doesn't know your name. You don't have a business. And you're trying to get credit for showing up. You're showing up to a charity event. And you want some kind of accolades for that. Because she only has one million up. dollars. You only have what? one million. Uno. Un million dollars. Un million. That's Un milli. Yep. It's Jesus. But is that what Lil Wayne was rapping about? A milli? A milli. Yeah, yeah, just one. Just one. A milli. Just period. one. That's that all was we're about doing. Jen Aiden and Bill Aiden. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's friends with them. That's not true. Don't put that out there. <laughs> but we get back to Jen and she's talking about the fucking step and repeat again. Like, this is my point. For everybody out there, let me give you guys a little, little lesson on a, a step and repeat that you probably already know because you're intelligent. If you want to be on a step, like when Shooter and I have a live show, for example, we did one with Bubbly. Bubbly sponsored the event. They gave us some Bubbly for it. We worked out a deal. The step and repeat was Brav Bros, Bubbly alternating across the board because they paid to sponsor the event. You do not get accolades for showing up to something. I think Jen Aiden thinks that she's a much bigger celebrity than she actually is. Absolutely. Teresa... If Teresa's like, hey, can you slap a namaste bitches on there? That's worth considering because Teresa's going to drive the numbies for that event. That's fine. Jen Aiden is not. So for her to think and assume that Aiden plastic surgery would be on there and then fake that she's upset about it so she can have a problem with Danielle really rubs me the wrong way. Well, I do love that the entire time when this goes back to last week, Jen keeps talking about putting Aiden plastic surgery on there. At the very end of this episode, she throws in the namaste bitches. Oh, you hear Teresa's that? standing yeah. right there. Yeah. She has not once said anything about Teresa. She hasn't said anything about anyone else but herself. And now, because Teresa's there, I got to make sure that Teresa's okay. Yep. Teresa doesn't give a shit about what you're talking about. Nope. She doesn't even know what you're talking about. She doesn't even agree with you at the end of the episode. So, no, she doesn't give a shit what you're talking about. You just wanted Bill Aiden. Look, I'm seeing through the cracks here. I like that. Is there financial problems in the Aiden household? Mm. 
Hmm. We're well, talking about how there's only one million here. You can't pay for all shit for one million dollars. Can't be full of shit like that. If you're gonna do this and you're trying to slap Aiden plastic surgery wherever you want, maybe there's something here. I like this. Maybe you're hungry for money because you're deep in some sort of hole from your fucking monstrosity of a house. And the pool house out back. Let's not forget about the pool house. You can't. There's probably some money buried out there. So here we are talking about your finances, and you brought it up, so we're going to talk about it. It gets to the Jackie issues, and Dolores is discussing the text that she got, and Danielle calls out that Teresa's going to drop Jackie, and this is the funniest part, because Teresa is literally using Jackie. Mm -hmm. She literally says it. She doesn't even hesitate. She's like, I'm just using her to take down Marge. Dolores acknowledges that Jackie's using Teresa because she thinks she's better than Teresa. They're using each other back and forth. The thing is, Jackie, you're not ready for this. No. You cannot go toe-to-toe. Teresa doesn't care about you. You do care about Teresa and her opinion. Teresa does not care about you. She will use you for what she needs and spit you out. You're going to try to use Teresa. You're going to get close to her and want to continue to be friends with her, and then she's going to bury you. Yeah, and it's really funny, too, because right before the season started, Jackie was on some sort of podcast talking about how she has grown closer to Teresa. And yeah, and she did at least admit in the beginning of this so-called friendship, it did seem a little transactional, but we have grown closer since then. You're watching this now. There's no chance in hell that you feel the same way, which is really funny to me. A lot of people don't really like that Teresa broke the fourth wall here, saying, if you want to even call it that, saying that she's going to just use Jackie to take down Mark. I didn't like it. I have no fucking problem with it because it's better than what we've been getting. That's fair. It's it's all it, it's all relative with when it comes to Jersey because Absolute, Jersey's yes. been such a shit show with all the same stuff happening and happening and happening. Now we're at least getting people just saying, "Hey, I'm just going to use this person to take because we we don't really have any respect for Jackie for what she's doing." Teresa is a housewife that maybe people haven't had respect for in a very long time. But if she's at least going to be honest about it, I'm okay with that. Because at the end of the day, we're going to take down Marge. That's what I want. Yeah. And my, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a, it's really, just where this show is now. The perspective that you just offered there, that's, you're correct. The fact that that is making this entertaining for what it is, fine. Yeah. I, I agree with that. In the grand scheme of where these shows overall in the housewives realm have gone, that's not good. It's not good that you're just forcing the fourth wall open and being like, this is what I'm doing. Here's my plans, because that's not what these shows are about. We know that behind the scenes, people are moving and being shady. That's why we watch. Now that it's just flat out like, oh, yeah, this is all a game. I'm playing. This is my card. Here's my pawn, whatever. In this specific season on this franchise, you are correct. Yeah. It does make for better watching. In the overall grand scheme, it's not a good plan. Yeah, if this had popped up in a different Housewife franchise that's doing well, like if we saw this in Miami, right? I wouldn't be all about it at all. But we don't even know the direction of this show at this point. Yeah, you're right. Okay. And I, look, I, again, we can say this a million times. I do hope they're going in a different direction next year because I'm seeing things happen this season that I know that one side or the other is just going to use against each other. Yeah, I yeah. watched last year. We're, there is no reunion because we'd just be talking about this. Yeah, exactly. You used Jackie to try to take me down. Yes, I did. Why? Because you suck. Like That's, it, it, that's really all it's going to be, and that's all next season's going to be. So they do need to move in a different direction. I had a thought pop through my head. If they were planning on doing this anyway, they would probably tell Teresa first. Do you think that she's just doing all of this shit and throwing things at the wall at this point because she doesn't really care? No, I don't think that she has that much foresight, to be honest with you. Mm. I think that But if she... Bravo sat down with her and was like, hey, we're going in a different direction next year, but you're going to be you know, either on your own show or you're going to be safe, what do you want to do? And she just decides to do this? I don't know. It's just It seemed like a weird move. Again, Like I, I had no problem with it because of the state of Jersey, and it at least made a entertaining watch for this episode and maybe future episodes but it still sat like that's a really weird move to do it's a strange move especially you know that jackie's gonna see it i think that Teresa, for all i can't keep saying all intents and purposes but whatever i think that Teresa, at this point in her career on housewives and we saw it last year you know ever since louis came into the fold pretty much she really doesn't care. Like yeah. she's so checked out. She knows that she's going to get a paycheck. She knows that she's got a life after this in some regard on TV. 
to me, it's just a checked out moment where it's like, this is what I'm doing. Like, I, I don't even think that she's thinking that far ahead. She's like, yeah, fuck it. Like, whatever at yeah. this point. That's kind of the vibe I get from her. But you're correct. I do like that the perspective shift there was important. So you're right. that For this show where it is, it was... It was a good moment. But we get to Fuda and Marge, and Fuda is working through. Her daughter just had surgery to get the tongue tie fixed and all that stuff. We get to see. that's That was rough. That shit's crazy. Yeah, dude, having to, like, scratch yeah. it out and stuff. Oh, my God, oh, yeah. I felt for her there. That's That sucks. You know, regardless of how you feel about her, at least they're on the road to recovery. And then we hear that Joe Benigno might have, I don't want to say might have, just his PSA levels were up, which could indicate prostate cancer. Hopefully that comes back and the numbers are down. Everything's cool there. Regardless of how you feel about Marge, you specifically, and the general masses, we don't wish negativity like that on anybody. So hopefully Joe comes through with with clean numbers, clean bill of health. But what I did gather from this, Marge, not that she's been, you know, composed over the years, she's breaking. Mm -hmm. We're seeing Marge break this season. I think she needs a head. From somebody. She's got to take somebody down. And if she doesn't, I think she's going to fucking snap. Yeah. No, it was really interesting to watch her talking to Rachel. Rachel wasn't going full bore against somebody like Jackie. She was still, she was listening to what Marge was saying about Jackie, but she wasn't willing to go as deep as Marge was. Correct. She was taking a bit of, look, you can call it a stance if you want to. It's not really, but she was taking a bit of a stance against Marge, not going down that toxicity hole. She said you went too low. Yeah. She said that you went too low with sending the screenshot right then and there. So she is at least trying to point out the things that Marge is doing. And we've seen Marge do a lot of shitty things in the past. That was the first one that I've ever seen her do right in front of somebody's face. So you might be right that she's breaking a bit. Because usually she would do that from behind the scenes. She'd have somebody else do it. The fact that she had her husband point at his phone, which is still very funny and still stuck in my head. Those are types of things... Yeah, that was, that was me yeah. being boop, boop, boop. But she hasn't done anything that I I I don't know. It, it just she seems off. That's what something it, yeah, seems really off saying. with her. And maybe it's because of her ex, you know, passing away, something going on with Joe, the whole Teresa thing. I, I'm not really sure exactly what it is. We can't really put our finger on it. But she needs people to either, like you said, she needs to be be able to go get ahead somewhere, or she needs people to try to check her. People in her own court try to check her because Melissa's not really going to do it. I think Melissa's checked out too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Rachel can step up and at least try to guide her somewhere. Marge is uncheckable. Marge is uncheckable. She's unguidable. I know that. But she needs something. I agree. I agree. It's going to be interesting to watch this, the collapse of this show this season in some way, shape, or form. Whether it gets, Look, this was a good episode, so maybe we have a sign of things to come. But from the rumors we're hearing and everything, like, there. It's going to get weird at some point. Things yeah. are going to start to get shaky at some point during the remaining episodes. I would imagine we have probably seven, maybe eight to go. With no reunion, I'm sure they're going to try to push it. I don't know. There's 15. I don't know what they're going to do. 15 or 16. Yeah. We're at eight right now. Yeah. So I, I would imagine seven or eight more. But moving on, we get to Paul and Dolores, and they are doing a little couples training. Love to see that. You know, very bonding moment. But there's a little public service announcement to dudes. All my dudes, all my bros out there listening, don't tell women what to do with their body. Yeah. It's not a good look. Even if you're coming from, this is what I've heard from guys in the past when they're like, you know, the classic thing, well, you don't need makeup. You're beautiful. You don't need to get that surgery. It's not for you, bro. It's not for you. It's for them. It's for the woman to make themselves feel better, more confident, whatever it might be. Whatever their reasoning is, is their reasoning. Don't weigh in on it. All you need to say is, I support you. Good for you. Don't tell them what to do with their body. It's not a good look. Yeah, I feel like a a moment like this could be, well, you know, you do whatever you're going to do with your plastic surgery, but I still want you to be healthy and that's going to be working out. Yeah, that's that's a good compromise. Fine. You can still come and work out with me. We can still do these training sessions together because it's a lot of fun and you feel a lot better. I feel a lot better. I'm transforming my body, but I'm not going to get plastic surgery. You can do that too. That's it. Do both. Yeah, that's why not both. Great way to approach the whole thing. But Yeah. yeah. Don't just say, definitely don't say, if you do that, I'm fucking walking. Like, yeah. that's, that's a bad look. But, Especially uh, when you're not even engaged. Yeah. <laughs> you're about to start a business, too. So, yeah. But whatever. They start talking about Jackie, and she is surprised by the whole thing, and understandably so. Dolores, 
has been pretty cool with Jackie, at least nice. Like she's never really started shit with her. She's always, she's, especially the past couple of years, she's played Switzerland. She even points out, I don't have rage. Like I don't get enraged anymore. And we haven't seen like a dolo snap yeah. in a very long time. She's much more composed. So she points out, I didn't know Jackie hated me. Like this is news to me. And like the Marge accusations about her talking shit about you and I, Polly, like that's alarming as well. And she even at this moment, recognizes like Teresa and Jen are just going to squeeze everything out of her. And this is the one thing from Polly this season I appreciated because this, this one sentence points to why the show is where it's at right now. If everyone's going to come for everybody, nobody's safe. There are no factions really anymore. Mm. The lines are blurred. They're falling apart. Jackie has no friends. Teresa's using her. Jen's using her because Teresa's using her. Marge has Fuda. Danielle is back and forth between everybody. Apparently, she's super close to Teresa, but just had a major falling out with Teresa's best friend, Jen, or uh, best friend in quotes, her best pawn. So that's kind of the best way to describe it. If everyone's gunning for everybody, nobody's safe. If nobody's safe, the show's not safe. So yeah. Polly inadvertently was like the soothsayer right there. So I appreciated that from him, but... We move on to the pre-Tulum party. This is the scene you were talking about where you felt bad for me because we're jumping back and forth. Everyone's getting ready for the party. Well, I really love the pre-Tulum party for one reason and one reason alone. Louis walking through the yard while people are setting up. Can you help? Hey, you guys good? You Everybody good? good? You Everybody good? good? Hey, you bartender? Cool. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. The guy behind the bar mixing the drinks? Yeah, it's probably the fucking bartender, you moron. That was a thousand percent. I love when Louis does things for the cameras. Oh, I know. It's just my favorite thing. It, you're not this stand-up guy. Like, what are you going to help them with? There are people that you paid to be there. Yes, the bartender is there. You don't have to thank him for coming. It's doing his job. Like, what? What are you? What are you doing here? I'm going to pull a card right here. Yeah, I do parties like this, like at, at places like this. Yeah. All of my experiences with the hosts have been they're very gracious, they're very kind, they come in very calmly. Like, hey, here's where everything is. If you need anything from me, holler at me. Yep. You can ask them. Like that person's running the service staff tonight. Like whatever you need, you just let me know. That's how it goes. And I've done this for multiple people across the Northeast. I've never once had anybody running around going, you what you got uh, trash bags. I got more bags now. Uh, here's a trash can. Uh, bartender, you're the bartender. Thank you. for coming. Like I've never experienced that in my life. So I 100% agree with you. Anytime he sees a moment to look like that guy, He's going to take that opportunity to look like that guy. And I can already feel you fucking tree stumps out there going, he can't do anything right. He can't because he's a piece of shit and he's not fooling me. And if he's got you fooled, that's your problem. Yeah. But anywho, during this whole pre Tulum party, everyone is discussing what is going to transpire pretty much like Jackie and Dolores. They're a mess. And you get to Jen and she is still stuck on Danielle. And even as she said, I hate I hate it makes my my skin crawl when we get these pre anything any event when we get these pre event conversations with Bill and Jen in their bedroom. Like the minute I see their bedroom, I get sad instantly. I'm like, here we go, and Jen is just spouting off nonsense while Bill's sitting there. He doesn't even know what she said, and he gives the generic like, "What? That's crazy!" Like when you're not paying attention to a story. Yeah. And she's setting the whole thing up, talking about Danielle and how it's been festering and how she doesn't appreciate how she treated Lena or Lina, whatever the fuck her name is. Why do you care so much? And why are you acting like you treat people better than how Danielle has treated? Again, we don't know Danielle's relationship with these people, except from what Danielle says. And she's saying it on TV pretty much like, I don't know her that well. I don't know her at all. So what? Yeah. Who the fuck is Lena? Yeah, none of it really makes any sense. I, her motives are very unclear. I think that you hit the nail on the head. She's Danielle is getting too close to Teresa, and Jen is getting territorial. She's trying to knock her down a peg because she's realizing that Danielle could be a good friend to Teresa, but I'm a better friend to Teresa. That's a good and point. And I'm going to get her out of here. Maybe that's what it is. That's the only thing that I could possibly think of. You can take it a step further, not to cut you off. Yeah, go ahead. But... The fact that Jen Aiden has been fishing for more friends this season. If she feels like her friendship with Teresa is being infringed upon, and now she's starting to reach out to more people to try to be friends with them. Possibility, yeah. That, I mean, that could be, because every single time that we talk about this issue, it doesn't seem like Jen has much of a personal relationship with people like Lena or 
what's the other girl's name? Melissa. Mel- um, it is Marissa. Marissa. It doesn't seem like Jen has any sort of interpersonal relationships with any of these people. So I don't know what she's so offended by. That's my thing. And maybe you, maybe you're pissed off that you showed up at this charity event. And you didn't get Aiden plastic surgery put on there, but you did throw in that Namaste bitches could also be on there. You didn't say anything on the entire time, so I don't think that's the sticking point. Mm-hmm. So there's no real indication as to why she's pissed off about this. And look, if you're not going to show us what your motives are, if you're not going to show us why you're doing this, we're going to have to speculate. I'm going to speculate. I'm going to speculate the hell out of this one. It has to be just because you're threatened by Danielle getting close to Teresa. That's what I gather from her, because this is the moment yeah. where she says, I don't know why she would bring her or, in. Or, let's take it back to your step, okay. step two. Okay. Her going out and being friends with everybody else, maybe she feels like by being having a sit down with Melissa, in the back of her head, she feels bad about that because she knows that Teresa's mad at her for that. And she's still doing it, but it's opening up a door in her mind where maybe Danielle could sneak in there and get close to Teresa closer than her. Okay. Yes. I don't know. No. She's got to be like, she has to be self-conscious of some other shit going on. Just to piss people off, I agree with you 100%. You're right. That's what's happening. That's what it is. (laughs) And next year, we're going to get Jen and Melissa being best friends against Teresa and Danielle. Probably. Oh, God. But we get to the party set up as we saw Louis outside being an idiot inside of the house. Teresa, without fail, has not missed an episode this season without wearing a Namaste Bitches t-shirt. Of course. She's in the kitchen with her Namaste Bitches shirt on. They're talking about Jackie, talking about Danielle. This was important, though, because you see that Teresa, she loves Danielle. Like She's really enjoyed getting closer with her. So, again, that adds to our theory, honestly. Because she's talking nothing but nice, even after Jen's been trying to drag her. Yeah, they're talking about Jen actively trying to tear Danielle down and how confused they are. Yeah, they don't understand it. Teresa doesn't even get it. That's your best friend, Jen. If Teresa doesn't understand what you're doing, why should we? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, but you can start to see between that, and we'll point it out a little bit later, but the way that Teresa handles the whole situation, it doesn't seem like she's coming to her best friend's aid. Not at all. She's really confused as to why you're doing the things that you're doing. She's not Aiden Aiden. She's not Aiden. Oh, nice. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's for, all you, that's for all you idiots out there. Okay. I'm on fire. Damn it, I tried to take it a step. I tried to do what you do and take it too far. Yeah. Aiden squared. Nope. And you were already doing it. Yeah. I always will. I will. But maybe you were tired. No, I am, but never too tired for a pun. Okay. I looked at the right camera this time. The right, the right camera. camera. <laughs> we only have one. <laughs> God damn it. I was so close. But we get to the Tulum party, and uh, there's a lot riding on this. Like the tension's already high as you go into it because you know how many fractures there are in the group, whether fabricated or not. So going into this, I'm expecting fireworks. Obviously, we got clips of things happening, so you know what's going to happen in this episode. But I thought it was hysterical that Teresa tries to sway Fessler with the private jet. It's like, well, if you hang out with me more, you'll get on the private jet. I think she was serious. I think she was too, yeah. (laughs) But Jen brings up Jackie immediately. Didn't waste any time, but... Was apparently talking to the right. Dolo's frustrated because she's like, Look, she's always acted elitist and classist and all this shit. And I thought that the moment was so good because right then and there, it flashes over to Jackie walking in. She says to Gia, I do book press and everyone's obsessed with your mom and me. It's like, I thought about that too. And I was, I was trying to look at it from a pragmatic way of thinking. Maybe she's saying that to Gia because it's Gia's mom and she wants to be nice and be like, yeah, me and your mom are friends. Like this is, but no, she was bragging Yeah, was in, brag. in a weird way. That was trying to put herself on the same level as Teresa. Yeah, I could see it. Actually, you know what? I could see it if Gia was say 13 years old. Not 22. Not 22 and understanding what's going on and probably was briefed on the whole Jackie situation earlier when she was. If she's 13 years old, yeah, everybody's obsessed with me and your mother. That's cool for a 13-year-old to hear, maybe, but not a 22-year-old who knows the game and knows what's going on and knows what role you're going to be playing moving forward. So, no, that was definitely just her bragging and saying, hey, we're friends. I have a book. I have a book, and me and your mom are friends, right? Cool. I also say that your mom made me relapse in the book, but everyone loves us. But everybody loves us. I love her, and she loves me. Maybe one day she'll get to one of my book signings. Nope. You can call me Aunt Jackie. But anyway. (laughs) And also, what? No Evan? 
Yeah, he Evan's been MIA parties. the whole season. He doesn't want to be on the show anymore. I think he's, he's done. over it. Yeah, but I love what Dolores says, and this is this is what she does, and she does it very well. Let someone destroy themselves because they're way better at it. And across the board on this show, if you took that advice, anybody, any castmate on this show, if you just took that advice, step back and let them bury themselves. You can talk about the men on the show. Mm -hmm. They'll do it. You can talk about any of the women on the show. They'll fucking bury themselves. You don't have to do it. You actually make things worse for yourself by inserting yourself into situations because most of these people will bury themselves if given enough time. If you just don't talk, they'll go insane and try to do too much and be flattened because of it. Yeah. So I love that she points that out, but... Once again, Jen brings up Dolores to Jackie immediately as soon as she sees them. And it immediately turns to Marge. And as that's happening, Teresa physically chokes. She starts choking and says, Marge is horrible and starts going off about Marge. Jen's going off about Marge. Jackie's jumping in on the Marge train a little. Jackie's doing it in the funniest way possible. I love Marge. You know, I would never do anything. But. Yep. Let me talk some shit about Marge. It's falling. Your 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 armor's falling, yeah. and as soon as it does, Teresa and Jen are going to wipe the floor. And with it's you. not like Teresa and Jen really took like a shady approach to it. Like we're gonna ease into this, try to get some information out of her, maybe try to like draw her down a bit, and then she'll go after Marge. They just start ripping Marge, hoping that she joins in. She says she's not going to, and then she immediately does. Puts Fessler in a very interesting position. Fessler bounces. <laughs> And I love that she calls... Uh, you know what? I, I love Marge. I, yeah. I, I got to get out of here. And I love that she calls back the the lunch that she had at her house. Yeah. And it was like, I have neighbors. And Teresa, for no reason at all, goes, I have five or six acres. She's like, thank God for those acres. And goes for a little stroll, yep. a little jaunt around the property to get away from these gotta idiots. Do it. But I'm so glad we get a quick cut of Louie doing ball claps. Um, Could have done without that. That will live forever in my brain. Yep. In a very bad part of my brain. I'm, I'm, I'm upset that that happened, but whatever. We get to Jackie and Dolores for one of the funnier scenes, actually, I've seen in a while. I, I liked this scene. It brightened my day. She, being Jackie, is trying to vent to Dolores about the fact that Marge sent the text. I don't know how I'll ever forgive her. Jackie, the contents of the text... Are you shitting on Dolores and you're going to Dolores to complain about it? Not only that, but she's still trying to spin the whole Marge talks about you and Polly. It's and irrelevant. I, I guarantee you by the end of this conversation, when Jackie says, or I'm sorry, when Dolores says sometimes friendships just need a break. I think Jackie thinks that Dolores is talking about Jackie and Marge. She is not <laughs> Dolores and Jackie, which I'm like, dude. How do you not know what's going on right now? How do you not realize that Dolores is icing you out? Yeah, she's not empathizing with you. No, she's telling you to your face, I don't want to be around you. Go away. This is a full-blown break. Maybe we'll never get back to that, but that's okay. And Jackie's like, yeah, you know, maybe we, me and Marge do need a break. It's devastating. <laughs> Fuck off. God. Go away now. I'm done with you. To to Jackie. Be gone with you. But it, that, it was genuinely funny, though. So I enjoyed that scene. But then we get Teresa and Danielle. And this is important. Usually these quick one-offs can go unnoticed. But this yeah. one's important because Teresa acknowledges that her and Danielle are closer than Danielle is with a lot of the other castmates. Now, if Teresa's just saying that to use it to her advantage, it might be so. But it, irrelevant because Danielle believes it. And that's yeah. important. I don't know if Danielle believes it, though. I think that Danielle would tell Teresa whatever she wanted to hear in that moment. I think so, too. I think too. she would have that same conversation okay. if Melissa put her in a position, she'd say that, too. Okay. Because I, I would argue that she's way closer to Melissa than she is to seems Teresa. To be. So. She even says early in the episode, I haven't seen Teresa since the brunch. Yeah. And yeah, you're going to have this conversation about the brunch. Teresa's going to act like it's not that big of a deal. Right. But she is going to ask you if you're closer to Teresa than you are to everybody else. And imply that you are. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going to take the bait and say, of course I am. Yeah, okay. All right, that's fair. But Danielle brings up Jen and just says, I, I'm confused. I thought we were good. I thought all of us were good. And now she's throwing shade at things that aren't problems. Like None of this is her issue to begin with. I don't know why she's inserting herself. Yeah. And at the same time, I've done nothing wrong. I put on a charity event. And we're going to get into that. And thanks to our good friend, Zach Peter, we got a full breakdown of how charity events work. And the lack of knowledge of that by 
Jen Aiden is, is very funny, but when we get to Danielle and Jen, they finally start talking, and Danielle just asks her, and she's not heated either. That's important to note. She doesn't enter this conversation trying to start shit yeah. with Jen. She just says, why would you say that to me? You know, you accused me of stealing from charities. You accused me of paying myself back, this and that. Here's how charities work. And if you want a full breakdown, Zach actually does an episode because he was a charity planner for a very long time. He did it for Donnie Wahlberg and Jen McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Those were his biggest clients and friends. So, like, he knows this realm very well. This was his job for years. The first thing you do after you run a charity is use the funds that you raised to reimburse all of the vendors. You pay for the party. That doesn't come out of your pocket. If you are a multimillionaire and you want to be that charitable where you're paying for it, good for you. Yeah. That's, that's, that's wonderful that you can afford to do that. Most people cannot. So when you put on a charity event, part of it is knowing that your expenses are going to come out of whatever is raised at the end of the night. That's standard practice. Jen going further to say, when she said, I'm going to pay myself for my time. We don't know if that happened. It's coming out of Jen's mouth. I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. At all. Yeah. Danielle's never given like those kind of shady vibes where she's trying also, to pocket shit. And it doesn't make any sense. It's not like Danielle paid either you or Teresa to be at the charity event. Right. So why would she then boast about her paying herself for making an appearance at the charity event that she's no running to the people that did not get paid for also making an appearance. Correct. That doesn't make any sense. Zero. Yeah. But she doesn't ever make sense. She no. just keeps saying stuff. And you can tell this scene to me the whole time, she's trying to invoke an emotional response. Yes. She's trying to get under Danielle's skin. She keeps throwing shit at the wall, waiting for something to land. It does eventually. And then you get, that's the fuck, that's the funniest part. The people that have any other viewpoint of this, you got what you asked for. And it came with a plastic cup upside your head. Uh -huh. That's what you asked for. Whether you wanted it or not, that was what you were doing by provoking and not stopping. And you can't fall back on it. Well, she was calm. She knew exactly what she was doing this whole time. And as she's poking her, she's like, she brings up the step and repeat again. This is where she says, and you can put a namaste bitches on there. That's the first time we've heard that, as mm -hmm. you pointed out. And she's like, it's like you have tunnel vision. It's like you, you're not gracious or grateful for anybody. It's like, since when? We've never seen like a selfish Danielle, even if you don't like her, show me a scene where she's acted that way and not grateful for people supporting her bougie kids, yep. being invited to certain things. Like we haven't seen that side of Danielle. So if I'm supposed to take the word of Jennifer Aiden, no thanks. No. Also, it doesn't kill you to show up to a charity event. No. To get your face out there. That's great PR. Yes, now there's it's pictures not. taken. Now it's terrible PR, but it's good PR that there's pictures taken with you, Teresa, Danielle, and Dolores standing there in front of the charity step and repeat, looking at everything and saying, "Hey, wow, good for you showing up and drumming up a little bit of support so that there's more money going to this charitable event." That's awesome. Instead, you're trying to do more. You're trying to be selfish and capitalistic about a charity event. You're the problem. You're the asshole. You're the problem. You're the asshole yeah, here. How do you not see that? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. That's I, that's probably why I get so flustered is because it seems so objective to me looking at some of this. Like, yeah. it, it shouldn't go another way. And people are like, no, uh based on what? That's If you have fucking evidence, I'll hear you out. I'll hear anybody out. We do it all the time. We'll bring people on this show that we don't agree with necessarily. And listen, if you have a good vantage point yeah i'll hear you and sometimes you'll turn me i'll be like oh shit i didn't look at it that way good call you do it all the time and yep. i'm like oh i didn't see it that way good good point it's not that we're immovable but you can't just say no uh and think that that's a response or fucking pull up a webster's dictionary <laughs> description like that's insanity but she says lena triggered you that much like why is that such an issue for you no it's something else too Go on. You've been talking about Lena for weeks. Yeah, it, We haven't heard about this other thing. She's like, oh, wait, no, there's something else. I had to have Lena on the show to tell her side of the story, which you then cut off because she was doing a terrible job telling the story. And you told the story. She didn't even remember the event you were discussing. Yeah. If you go back, she goes, you remember it was that thing? She's like, oh, um, yeah, it was at, uh, and Jen, Jen's like, yeah, I was here. And you did this. And this is where she went wrong. So if that's not what's bothering you, then why have you been talking about it for weeks? It's, it's not. It's the fact that Marissa was doing something with hair extensions and... Jen Aiden thought it was a master class and she was being invited to put the extensions on. Danielle called her and just said, hey, I want to let you know what you signed up for. She's putting extensions in. There's no money involved here. 
I don't want you to piss off your hair lady or your hairstylist. I don't want that to happen. Just giving you a heads up. Seems Je- reasonable. Seems reasonable. What seems even more likely is Jen's response where she goes, oh, I, I don't have time for that. Thank you. Good looks. Appreciate you. And now you're using it against her and saying, I don't like that. You always try to figure out a way. Like You can't just show up for somebody and do something nice. It's like, you can't. You can't. That's the funniest part. Danielle called you and told you all this information, and you didn't show up. That's all it you was need Danielle to know. Danielle and Dolores still there doing it because it's their hair person. That's you listen to what Danielle said and then you didn't show up. So for the people who didn't show up, raise your hand, Jen. That was just you. Okay, great. So Danielle still showed up. So in I guess Jen's warped mind, not showing up for your hair person is not having Jen Aiden there to do it. I guess. That is what her definition. Let somebody look that up on Webster. See if Jen Aiden's in there. Yeah, show it. That idea is wild. I didn't even think of I didn't even yeah. that is a you're, you're accusing her of not not showing up for her hair person. We saw pictures she was there. of her showing up for the hair person. You didn't show up. You found out there was no money involved and you yeah. did not show up. You just showed your true it's, colors. It's insane, yeah. But of course, she gets riled up because yeah you're pulling stuff this would piss me off too yeah. if you're pulling shit that we discussed and it was a friendly conversation well, and it's because you didn't get a ri- you didn't get the rise or the reaction out of danielle that you wanted so now you're pulling stuff out of your ass well no she saw her get activated a little bit with the lena stuff she goes yeah. you're crazy you're psychotic and she's like oh i got you now yep i'm gonna now i'm gonna drill it in. a terrible friend yes i'm gonna just this is where you get the you're dirty you're dirty and like you're you're fucking dirty bro and that's exactly what Jen wanted. Uh-huh. And that's where everyone's, the funniest ones I saw was Danielle was going to hit her no matter what. No, no she, she wasn't. wasn't. She absolutely wasn't. And there's, it's so obvious to me how many people out there have not been in a fight or been punched in the face before when they comment on shit like this because you have no idea what you're talking about. She wasn't going to hit her. Things escalate. And what Jen did not expect to happen, and this is why it all went the way it did, Jen didn't expect Danielle to get under her skin because Danielle, whatever she says when she said, you're a fucking dirtbag, for whatever reason, that hit home and Jen got pissed. It was weird. She completely just turned too because Jen was completely like even keeled. She was even doing the smirk that everybody knows when you're trying to get under somebody's skin. That's the best way to do it. And yeah, Danielle got close enough to you. But you still seemed like you were calm and cool and still trying to get under her skin. And then out of nowhere, it it looked like it was almost going to de-escalate completely with Danielle walking away. And you're the one who pushed her. The dirtbag thing. It was weird. Struck a nerve. Yeah. And she shoved her. Which that... time, though? She called her a dirtbag 15 times. It's the the last, 13th time? I guess the last time when she stepped Too up much. and said, you're a fucking dirtbag. That is when you see a, something switch. I don't think she even registered that she shoved her. I think that it was just yeah. reactionary. It could have been that. I mean, it could have just been how close she was. Which we've which already is said. Fine. We get yeah. that. Okay. We understand that. Yeah. Understand. Somebody got really close to you and is screaming in your face, calling you a dirtbag and pointing in your face. Yeah, sure. You can shove them. Absolutely. Cool. But don't then be the victim when you catch a hand or a cup to the side of your head. I, you invited again, she it. she didn't play the victim as you normally would see it. Obviously, everybody else is going to be like, whoa, 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 that's too much, Danielle. But you, when you try to analyze the entire thing, like, yeah, obviously, Jen's okay to shove Danielle. Danielle reacted. That's the reaction that she wanted. You're not going to sit there and cry and play the victim. If she did that, that would have been absolutely insane. Yeah, I know. But we can still sit here and actually logically look at this and say, Jen was just trying to get Danielle to do something like that. That's why she was so happy-go-lucky at the end of the episode. You just got a drink smashed in your face. And you're smiling and laughing and saying that you're strong. It could have been glass. It could have been glass. It could have been a bomb. And glass. Like, what the fuck? Do you understand that's the same thing? Yeah. It could have been literally anything. Yep. But it was not. It was a plastic cup. Mm-hmm. You idiots. Ugh. Ugh. This, I, I'm telling you, man. It, it's just... F- it's flustering. But as far as Jersey episodes go, this was an entertaining one. It hit, no pun intended. If Danielle, does, if she gets suspended after this altercation, maybe it's a different one that we haven't seen yet. But if it's because of this, that's horseshit because she didn't make contact first. Yeah. Let's get to some questions. Let's get to some questions. Uh, from reality T underscore, is violence sometimes the answer? 
You, I just like that one. <laughs> you're asking the wrong people. Um, look, if it's two consenting parties and shit goes down, sometimes shit happens. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, from Brittany0117, do you think Jen Aiden has a closeted anger problem? She loves to get physical with people. That's the best part, dude. I forget, I think Zach, once again, posted clips across the season of Jen escalating situations, Jen breaking glasses, Jen doing all sorts of physical shit, but now Danielle's the monster, and Jen Aiden would never. Like, if you're going to die on the Teresa or Jen Aiden Hill, at least have the wherewithal to own some shit. You idiots. Yep, that would make sense to me. From Daria underscore PNG, does Teresa see Dolores as her pawn too, or like a real friend? Neither. I think that Teresa is friends with Dolores. I think yeah. Teresa knows that she can't manipulate or fuck with Dolores, so she she's a non-factor in my opinion. Uh, from Mary had a little, does Bill even give a shit about Jen? That was the calmest reaction ever. We didn't get to talk about that. We, we missed that part. I think that was hysterical. Nate yeah. is going to bat for Danielle, getting her out of there, being like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, you're the best. Like, don't let that bother you. Bill's eating. Yep. Bill's too high. I love right the reaction. He smoked of... a big blunt and he's just crushing food. All the other people sitting in there too were like, oh, fucking, like I should have known this was coming, but you know, whatever. I think Bill just like casually wipes his mouth off with a napkin. I yeah. think that was his move. He was just staring at her like with a little smile on his face. He's like, yeah. He was definitely stoned. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I know I, when I go to bed. And, I, and when he comes <laughs> out later, he's like, did you guys get physical? Little, uh, little punchy what punchy happened? earlier. I don't what know. What happens? Are you uh, good? Who was that? Uh, Who was yelling at me? Who's the blonde? Yeah. <laughs> She's really mad at you. <laughs> uh, from Brian Scott Patterson, let's chat why Dolores is the hero of the season. She's not putting up with bullshit at all. No, she doesn't have time for it, man. And that's like, she plays by the rules she set forth earlier in the show. Let them bury themselves. There's no, you don't need to go after these women or the men on the show. They'll do it themselves if you give them enough time. And she... She's a no BS person. She always has been. And now she's a little bit more Zen. So she's a little more collected during these things. So she doesn't just simply does not have the time. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, we'll do two more here from Amanda Grace. One, one, two, nine. Will they reboot the entire Ron J cast or remove the fighting parties? Um, fighting parties sounds sick. By fighting the way. parties sounds cool. Uh, I don't know. I, I have no idea the direction they're going to take this show. I don't know what they want to do with this show. I, I, the fighting parties is, could mean many things. The, yeah. the physically fighting parties, is it the Teresa versus Marge parties? Is it Teresa versus half the cast? Is it half the cast versus Hiala? Like, there's too many factions now. Half the mo Most of them don't get along with each other. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Damn it. Me either. Sorry. Who knows? Sorry. Anybody know? No. Uh, from Roan JTB. Thoughts on all the receipts that came out proving Teresa wanted to ruin her castmates? Are we surprised? Like, what, what more do you need? Yeah. Like, what she, more do you she, need? She did just actively on the show say that she wanted to ruin one of the castmates. So, yeah. I mean, she's obviously going to leave somebody out like Jen, Dolores, eh, maybe Danielle. Who knows how we look at the end of the season. But, like, no, I'm not surprised. Not at all. And here's the thing. I'm not saying you can't be a they Teresa. They might not even fan. be real receipts, but I'm not surprised if they are. That's it the other just part. doesn't matter. And like, I don't, I don't care if you're a Teresa fan. Like, I don't look down on people that like Teresa. My whole thing with that side of the street is if you are going to die on that hill, at least acknowledge some of the shit she does. That's all. Take accountability. If you're going to be a fan, you have to like her for everything. You can't just say, no, uh, once again, no, uh. Is not a response. No. -uh. Webster's dictionary definitions, not a response. Correct. Use your brain. Brains. Anyway. Brains. Uh, I feel better. <laughs> Brains. I feel better. This has once again been cathartic Good. for me, so thank you. Good stuff. Uh, don't forget, Brav Bros members, click that link at the bottom of this episode description or head to the Instagram bio and click that. We are starting the rom-coms, baby. It is time. Our next Zoom is in the next couple of weeks so you can jump in and join the community there we had a blast last time we're gonna have a blast again other than that you got anything else nope well good rob bros are out of here later